Drop it. Drop it. People I've met. Paul Doyle of Salford. I've mentioned this lad's name, we had lots of chats. I think he's probably still in prison. Last time I saw him, he was looking about 13. Paul Doyle of Salford. So you got your phones, go and have a look who he is. Then come back and watch this vlog. So, again, Strawberry Blonde. We're looking for an orderly lad coming off G-Wing. As soon as I saw him, I knew who he was. I'd seen him about. Not knew who he was, I mean the character. Remember when I first seen him, he'd been in the jail a while. You know when you look at someone, me, people watching all the time. Seen this lad. If he was a caricature, be Popeye. No pipe in his mouth, no sailor's hat. But it could be characterised as Popeye. And the thing that I noticed about him was his forearms. Got long forearms like me, but they were built like Popeyes. Looking at his features, he was definitely a fighter. Not a weightlifter or a bodybuilder, even though he got some uh, muscular forearms. His nickname in Salford, he was well known, not as, or maybe I didn't know, because I was a Sheffield lad, but he was well known in Salford. Called One Punch. Apparently were good with both his left and his right. So he's now on healthcare. We've got another, um, sorry, another orderly, Jay. Done a podcast with him. And making up third man was Lloydy. I'll talk about him one day. So we've got three lads there. Again, healthcare orderly, trusted job. Working on their own a lot. They did a lot of things on there that other prisoners in other places in the jail wouldn't do. We had to fight, me and Strawberry Blonde, as members of staff, to get their wages put up. Reception orderlies were the highest paid, I believe, and maybe the gym orderly. On healthcare, they did way more than reception. Yeah? Cleaning showers twice a day, serving meals twice a day, cleaning cells, painting cells, cleaning floors, doing the laundry. There was a lot of work to do on there. They used to lock them lads up after the morning briefing, around 7.30, bang them up, quarter past, half past eight at night, trusted. All three lads, super polite. So, Paul Doyle, got to know him really well. I knew about his criminal history, we talked about it. Um, talked about his childhood. That's between me and him. There were private conversations, you know, me growing up, him growing up, all very different. This way, Stevie, very different backgrounds, different lifestyles. I told him about my childhood. He told me about his, yeah? Prison officers will be thinking, a bit personal that, don't talk to cons like that. If you never worked on a healthcare or somewhere like that where you're in close contact, you would not understand. They were trusted, these lads, and I did trust them. So we had the conversations, normal conversations. People would be talking about football and stuff like that. We'd talk about growing up. You know, how I could have ended up as a criminal. How he could have gone straight. But it's, it's personal stuff. That was between me and him. Done a lot of prison. The thing that stands out, though, for me, really stands out, at 17, he made a decision that he was going to be the best criminal he could. And he was going to make as much money as he could. And that's what he did. Obviously, the downside of that is prison time. He met some unsavoury characters on the way. And, you know, there are consequences always for your loved ones. Genuine guy, genuine conversations. We got on really well. So all three of them lads, um, 
they were liked by the staff they would do anything like I say so I thought about how I could put a cross how much I trusted these lies and, and what they were like you know I'm not talking about in Stockport or in Salford where they're up to the criminality I'm talking about now employed by me and Strawberry Blonde to work on the healthcare all three of them lads in a fantasy world I would have sat down at my family table at Christmas they wouldn't have let me down they've been polite, respectful, thankful good conversation that's what they were like you know, not literally I hope that explains what I'm trying to get across they worked hard on the healthcare, I've told you before we had vulnerable prisoners, VPs, sex offenders we had some evil, nasty, high profile prisoners the likes of Mark Bridger, Jonathan Vass so in effect these lads were working alongside these they did a great job, they'd spend hours talking to prisoners who were mentally unwell, I didn't have hours to stand at a cell, a hatch, talking to someone who was locked in the cell because I couldn't get him out, who was having a hard time, they would. Again, Mr. Samworth, can I drop the hatch and speak to him? Of course you can. Or me, Lloydie, Paul, Jay. Go and have a go and have a chat with Laddie next five. Go and have a chat with and they do it. Perks of the job. You got a lot of time out of cell. Used to use gym in the afternoon. Less busy on healthcare. They'd go in the gym, come in association. They were always good company. Even the gym. Strawberry Blonde, Mr. S, can we go in the gym? Of course you can, lads. Yeah? Hardened criminals. Bank robbers, drug dealers. Into all sorts. Every hard bastard that ever come through doors at Strangeways or any other prison has probably had a job as a cleaner, orderly. They were no exception. So that's Paul Doyle of Salford. Just tell you a little story now. This is how it works in the criminal world. He told me about this. He had a mate, he had an equestrian centre. For those of you that don't know what that is, he had a small farm, he had an area where he could excise horses, they trained horses, they had a shop, riding lessons, sold saddles, bridle wear and things. So he's a good mate of Paul's, he's known him a long time, his business is going down the pan. As you know, when receivers come into a business, they take everything, you don't get nothing back. So this guy had had this business a long time, fallen on hard times. So he phoned Paul up. He says to Paul, do you want to buy the horse stuff? So Paul says, you know, told him a story. Well, he didn't tell him a story actually. He just says, do you want to buy the horse stuff? They've obviously already spoke about this. So Paul says, yeah, what's the value? I don't know what the value was. Anyway, a short while after, I don't mean hours, maybe days, maybe a week, Paul's door goes through, yeah, coppers, arrested, conspiracy to supply ketamine. Anybody out there who doesn't know what ketamine is, it's a horse tranquilizer. It's used by people as a recreational drug. I've never used it or anything like it, I don't know how you use it. I do know in Sheffield, on the club scene how it used to be, you could go partying 10 o'clock Friday night, leave a club in the morning, 8 o'clock, go to another club, go to a club Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday tea time, you're on your way home, maybe even Monday morning. So you take their ecstasy, the GBH, whatever they're taking, ketamine was part of that scene. So on the phone, his mate said, do you want to buy the horse stuff? 
he said yeah what's it worth he was arrested locked up for a while for conspiracy to supply ketamine that's how it works like he says i'm in the criminal world they're listening to me phones fair cop short time in jail and he's back out doing his business there you go guys again only a short one just to give you a snippet of what some of these lads like when they come inside thanks for coming catch you later